the Canes, ranked number three, hosting 18th ranked Florida at the Orange Bowl. That's former Gator Brock Berlin, first start against his old team, transferred from Florida after the 2001 season. His last game as a Gator, well, a 2002 Orange Bowl. Long scoring pass here to Taylor Jacobs, Florida one big, 56-23. Back to Saturday, Berlin gets some help early. This is true freshman Devin Hester, and he is back for the Canes on the opening kickoff. Here from the three. Streaks across the 30. He might be gone. Petrovic, the kicker to beat. Forget it. It's going to be a touchdown. Irvine, 97 yard kick return. Canes lead 7 0. 10 10 of the second quarter. Berlin drops back. Frank Gore not looking. This is a live ball. Florida's Darrell Lee pushes Gore out of the way so Kiwan Ratliff can come in and scoop it up. 35 yards the other way. They went for two, didn't get it. So it's 16 10 Gators. Third quarter, Florida pouring it on. Rand Carthon from six yards. Florida led 33 10 with 6 10 to go in the third. But back come the Canes, still in the third quarter now. Second and four, Berlin. Kevin Baird down to the one. Baird seven catches for 164. Gore would run it in for the score, and the Canes are down 33 25. They go to the fourth quarter now. Berlin finding Ryan Moore. Berlin 27 of 41 for 340. Miami back within one. Still in the fourth. First and 15 for the Canes. Berlin. Sidoris Moss, 26 yards and a first down. Under 420 to go here. Same possession, a big down, fourth and one. And Berlin, the bootleg for the first, finding cramps in his legs, dehydrated. And you could tell he was definitely not walking right after that one. He would stay in the game. Had to be attended to by trainers. Later in the possession, here's Gore. 24 carries, 127 yards. They went for two, didn't get it again. So Miami up 38-33, 28 unanswered points for the Canes. Florida last drive. Freshman Chris Leak finds Dallas Baker. 19-yard gain. Leak has never thrown a collegiate interception. And what a time for it. Alfonso Marshall picks it off. Canes come back and win. What a game. There was no panic. I mean, I, I never once doubted our quarterback. I never once doubted our, our defense as a whole. I never once doubted our offense as a whole. I just said, just go out and just play. I said, Brock, we're going to put the ball in your hand. It's up to you to, to, to make it happen. That was tough, you know, but I knew that you just got to keep fighting, you know. And it's not always going to go that way. Go your way, you know, and I didn't want to let my teammates see that I was down. I just said, hey, we're going to get it back, and we did. We came back and fought, and I'm proud of my teammates. Well, the Hurricanes have trailed at some point in the fourth quarter four times under Larry Coker, three times. They've come back to win the game. You play to win the game, as Herm Edwards would say. That one loss coming in the national championship game to Ohio State when Miami lost in double OT after rallying to tie the game with no time left. They come back to win this one in regulation. Kirk Herbstreit, your thoughts. I think you have to give Florida's defense a lot of credit. Coming into this game, they knew they had to take away Miami's strength, and that's their running game. And Frank Gore, Charlie Strong, the defensive coordinator for Florida, put eight guys at the line of scrimmage, took away Gore, and confused Brock Berlin. I think the pressure got to Berlin early, but give him a lot of credit. Down by 23 points in the third quarter, he made the adjustments. He got back, went to a no huddle, found his rhythm, found open receivers downfield, and also in the process, you, always, you could kind of feel the Gators' defense falling back and getting on their heels. The Gators tonight played hard, came up short. The Canes, big victory, and they found a new leader and a new quarterback. This team now belongs to Brock Berlin. Miami has now won five straight over Florida. The Canes extend their home winning streak to 23 games. They've won 34 straight regular season games overall and 112 in a row when scoring at least 30 points. Alabama hasn't played a number one since beating Miami in the 1993 Sugar Bowl. Number one, Oklahoma at Tuscaloosa. 20 seconds left in the first quarter. Alabama with the ball, and it's 45. Check out the nose tackle, Tommy Harris. How long did that take? Brody Coyle sacked. Coyle, rough start. First pass was picked. Jason White's first deep pass. It was a doozy. Mark Clayton pauses and then goes right by Charles Jones. You saw three defenders kind of bite. Clayton. 46 yards, 13-3 at the half. Third quarter, same score. Alabama, Croyle with the pass to Triandos. Luke, 13-10, and Big Mo appears to be moving Bama's way, especially when it's fourth and long, and Bama's going to get the ball back. Blake Ferguson punting. Blake Ferguson faking to Michael Thompson, the defensive back, goes 22 yards on a play specifically designed for this game. Bob Stoops, genius. 
they weren't guarding our wing and they were just rushing everybody off the side so we didn't feel like that was that was correct we ought to take advantage of it it worked fortunately we're, we're lucky all right, and you're good. Very next play, White goes deep post. Remember, White back from the knee injury against Bama a year ago. Brandon Jones, 47 yards, posted up Oklahoma's 15th consecutive non-conference win. They win it, 20-13. State hosting San Diego State. Buckeyes favored by 32 of 115 straight. Nation's longest winning streak. Aztecs with the lead and threatening. We arrow Will Allen, and here's why. Chris Gamble tipping the mat. Dugalecki pass. Allen gets his mitts on it, and he's off. My first thought was, I'm gone, Allen said afterwards. I saw the blockers, and I thought, I'm going to go 100 yards. That's just what he did. Buckeyes take the lead on the top 10 play nominee. Allen almost dropped it there at the end. Fourth quarter, Ohio State by three. Under three minutes to play, Tyler Everett drops the pick. We'll get over all over him at the family barbecue. Remember last year, Cincinnati almost busted the Buckeyes in the second game of the season. Fourth down, late. Incomplete Aztecs turn it over on downs. How about Ohio State completing a third down? 0 for 13. Oh, there's one for the road. Craig Krenzel is 5 of 20 for 76 yards. Ohio State wins 16 13. Buckeye fans cheered San Diego State as it ran off the field. Number 16, Notre Dame, a thrilling opener in South Bend against Wazoo. Second quarter, Ty Willingham's team down 12 0. That's Will Durding. Sacks Carlisle Holiday. Holiday coughs it up, and there's Isaac Brown picking it up for the Cougs, and he is running it in. Washington State up 19 0. Under the Golden No. Fourth quarter, Irish down 19 9. Holiday fumbles the snap. Cougars appear to recover, but watch Holiday reach in there and regain possession. Never gives up on it. Nice play. Same drive. It's Holiday. Brahima McKnight busting tackles. Notre Dame back within three. Holiday 21 of 34 for only 149. Later, Julius Jones, 72 yards on 11 carries. Notre Dame up 26-19. They get 181 yards and 20 points in the fourth quarter. 101 to go. Second and 16 for Wazoo. Matt Kegel, watch the catch by Sammy Moore. This is unbelievable. Spinning, adjusting, one-handed, and he's got it. We got a flag on the play. Pass interference on the Irish's Preston Jackson. Jackson pushes more before the ball even gets there. Touchdown stands. Kegel, 22 of 39, couple of touchdowns. Extra point attempt. Drew Dunning missed one earlier. This one just gets through. We're tied at 26. Overtime in South Bend. Dunning here from 34. <laughs> Wide left, so Notre Dame can win it on their possession. Kicking here on third down, Nick Setta from 40. This will win it for the Irish. His fifth field goal of the game, and Notre Dame wins 29-26 in overtime over Washington State. Ty Willingham said afterward, we're lucky. Fifth-ranked USC hosting BYU fighter jets over the Coliseum. USC taking the fight to the Cougs early. First quarter, they're already up 7-zip. Keep your eye on Omar Nazel. Matt Berry wishes he'd had his eye on him. The big sack there. And then later in the first quarter, the arrow again on Nazel again. And, well, you're going to recognize the Nazel. It's touchdown. A big ugly gut one. Omar Nazel. Keith Jackson, USC leads 21-0. Norm Chow had to be pumped. Third quarter, 21-5. Barry, Daniel Coates, he scores. It's 21-12. Barry, 297 yards through the air. 21-18, fourth quarter. Matt Liner, three touchdown passes, two to Mike Williams. This one from 18, 35-18. That's 10 in a row, dating back to last season for the Trojans. Auburn pasted at home by USC last week, hoping for better luck at Georgia Tech, where true freshman Reggie Ball was making his first start at QB for the Yellow Jackets. Here's his very first play. Hooks up with Nate Curry, 54 yards, but Ball just 9 of 21 for 149. Sets up a field goal. Second quarter, here's Ball. Let's go drop play. Picks up 11 yards. Sets up a touchdown. Forget the numbers, just get the W. Just before half, Auburn down 10-0. John Vaughn from 22. The Tigers' first points of the season, 89 minutes and 27 seconds in. And so far, their only points of the season. Late in the third, here's ball again to Mark Logan. Yellow Jackets going to win this one. What a disaster for Auburn. They lose here 17-3. And after the game, watch ball. He gets a ride from the Tech fans in the stands. But, hey, don't drop the quarterback. 
Number 11, North Carolina State at Wake Forest. T.A. McClendon spectating with an injury. He fell in the team lounge. <laughs> the Wolfpack be caught looking ahead to Ohio State next weekend. Who's ball? Down 14-3, and not sure what they're seeing here. It was Corey Randolph to Nate Morton, back to Randolph, and he was on the move. That would lead to another Wake score. Take another look. Four Wolfpack defenders look like they bought a ticket to watch this play. Randolph. The only rookie quarterback in the ACC this season pulling one over on him. Still in the first half, NC State punt and get an eye of Willie I. Dullett. Said after the 38-24 upset win, hopefully the quad will be white with toilet paper. They really tear it up at Wake Forest after a big win. 38-24, <laughs> Wake 2-0 with Purdue. Atlanta Club hosting 15th ranked Virginia. Gamer squeezed by La Lafayette a week ago. Cavs shut out Duke. Nomad Schwab separated right shoulder. His replacement, Frenchman Anthony Martinez, picked twice and just 54 yards through the air. Second quarter, Virginia ahead and South Carolina in a hole on its own one after a down punt. First down, Dondrell Pinkins hits Troy Williamson on the slant. A new South Carolina record, and it ties the SEC mark set in 77 when Florida's Collinsworth and Gaffney connected for a 99-yard score. Virginia never recovered. Dacus Terman runs for 123 yards in the score right here. South Carolina 31-7. First win over a ranked opponent since beating Ohio State in the 2002 Outback Bowl. 20th ranked Purdue opening up with Bowling Green in West Lafayette. Just over two minutes left. That's Josh Harris. Bowling Green deep to Charles Sharon. Harris threw for 357 yards and three touchdowns. Bowling Green beats Purdue 27-26. 25th ranked Penn State hosting Boston College. Joe Paterno, 16 and two against BC. Hasn't played him since 92. He lost that one and he's behind in this one. Quentin Porter to Grant Adams from 18. It's seven zip. That was BC's first drive and this is its second. Porter to Tony Gonzalez, 14 nothing. 118 of Porter's 145 passing yards came in the first quarter. I looked up and we were down 14, said Joe Pa afterwards. Penn State's next possession, Zach Mills screen pass. Picked off by Tom Martin. He takes it to the one. They should give him the touchdown on that. First play after that, well, coach, it's it's one of your transfers. Horace Dodd, he scores left because Turner wanted him to be a DB. BC, 27-14 over Penn State. Upset at Northern Illinois in their opener, facing a tougher road test Saturday at Florida State. Knowles 13-0 versus the Terps all-time. Chris Ricks' his first pass. Uh, eight. Intercepted to Quell Jackson, 58 yards, and look at him bouncing off guy. 7-0 Maryland. But as we said, that was pretty much the highlight of the game for the Terps. Second quarter, Florida State third and two. Greg Jones getting outside, 44 yards. He ran for 88 on the day and a couple of scores. 14-10, Seminoles. Late third, 21-10 FSU now. Ricks for P.K. Sam. Ricks, 16 of 29, 228, two touchdowns. 35 unanswered for the Knowles. They win big 35-10. Maryland, just 197 total yards off to an 0-2 start. Number 17, Wisconsin hosting Akron. Danny Heatley played hockey for the Badgers. He was the NHL All-Star Game MVP. This game's MVP got to be Lee Evans with Whiskey leading by just three in the fourth quarter. Jim Sorge finds Evans, sat out last season after undergoing two knee operations, has not lost a step. Third 99-yard TD in Big Ten history. The Zips are zapped. Cats coming off their worst season in 45 years. They're going to suffer their third worst home loss ever. Matt Mock completed 9 to 10 passes, 137 yards, including this touchdown to Michael Clayton. Top 10 play nominee. It's 31 nothing right now. Worse in the second quarter. Marcus Randall, Nick Saban's other quarterback, goes to DeVry Henderson, 55 yards. LSU wins 59-13. First game against a Pac-10 foe in 19 years. And for so many members of Darrell's staff, had Colorado ties, defensive staff from Colorado State, and none of them figured out how to stop Bobby Purify there. 7 nothing Buffs. Matt Moore won the starting quarterback job for the Bruins, and late in the first quarter, Brandon Dabdu gets on his leg, and Moore would not return. And Drew Olson came in, and I thought Drew really played well. Obviously understands the offense. You'll see him here, a little play action fake. Nice protection, 47 yards. Craig Bragg had a terrific game, not only in receiving, but special teams as well. And Olson was not done. 
You know, why drive a junker when you got a Mercedes out there? Mercedes Lewis into the house, into the garage, 14-10. Joel Klatt didn't throw for 400 as he did against Colorado State. Klatt threw for buck 57, but most effective there to Joe Kloppenstein, and Kloppenstein's catch turned out to be the gamer. The Buffs are 2-0. There's so many problems getting out of the gate off to a terrific start with a couple of thrilling wins. Indiana and Washington. Washington got thrashed when they went to the shoe last week. Indiana did likewise against UConn. You know, Indiana's trading one set of Huskies for another one. Cody Pickett to Charles Frederick for the touchdown. Pickett threw for 290. That's a little option right there. It was almost too Yasasopo esque. <laughs> Shelton Sampson runs it in for a touchdown. And the Huskies who were threatened by the fighting Donardos for a little while, but they pulled away late. Indiana should try someone else besides Huskies. UConn gets them, then Washington gets them. 38 to 13 is the final. Clemson, an embarrassing performance against Georgia in the opening week. Tigers hoping to atone for all of their troubles. Charlie Whitehurst, the thing is tipped around. Oh, oh big, the big bounce got oh, two hands, two hands, big guy. William Henry, and then it bounces to Dwayne Coleman, who is more accustomed to running with the ball. Clemson feeling much better about themselves. 28 to 17, the final there. Oklahoma State got nothing done on offense against the Black Shirts. 48 to 24, where Tennessee gave Marshall $550,000 to come play. Marshall got his money's worth. Casey Clawson to Tony Brown, and just before the half, Ball's able to grab the lead. And then Cedric Houston settling into Tennessee. And this football. is the real identity of Tennessee's offense, running the football. Cedric Houston gets a great hold of the right side, takes it down the sideline, it's a nice stiff arm, and takes it down to the two-yard line, 51-yard run. Hey, Marshall got this thing within a touchdown late in the fourth quarter. Tennessee, the field goal to put it away. Houston with another big day in Tennessee's off to that 2-0 start. Hi, Manning taking the Ole Miss Rebels into Memphis to take on the Tigers. And Eli got off to a much better start. Tossed out there to Kerry Johnson. He's spreading it all over the place. Kate Biddle catching a touchdown pass. Manning through four of those bases. Well, I just thought he got really comfortable, but you know, Memphis just kept coming back. And, and look at the beautiful pass here. Danny Wimpine did a nice job. He even got a pass interference there. Memphis just continued to come back. Tavarius Davis scoring the 92-yard touchdown. Ole Miss exploded early in the second half, and then Memphis rallied again. 44 to 34. Second straight week. The Rebels have played in the state of Tennessee. They escaped Vanderbilt. Did not escape the Tigers. But look what Eli did again. Nearly 300 yards in this game. These are the school records he set on Saturday. Over 6,900 yards of total offense. He broke his dad's record for touchdowns responsible for Michigan State. And the State University of New Jersey with a 21-14 lead. And kickoff, DeAndre Cobb. Not anymore. Oh, covering that field turf. Watch that rubber burn. <laughs> Michigan State ties the game at 21. And Jeff Smoker led the band last week after the win. And he's playing some pretty nice music again. Darren Hayes. Smoker went for three and a half. Three touchdowns. Michigan Hayes State. 50. Yes. Oh. Half. 44-28 is the final. Nevada and Oregon. Nevada no longer it looks like Tweety Bird gone berserk. They're back just in the green with the yellow trim. Jason Five finding Sammy Parker. Oregon leads Nevada 17-0. No, Bilotti said we needed to think like 17-year-olds that they liked those uniforms that they wore against Mississippi State, the all-yellows. Kellen Clemens now finding Parker. Parker finished with seven catches, 162 yards, couple of touchdowns. Nevada made it tough. 31 to 23, the final. Oregon playing two quarterbacks, everything going along swimmingly so far for Bilotti's team.